Hello friends, Adam here with FED. Today I want to talk about the 8 best chapters in all of Fire Emblem to help you become better at the game. And they specifically help you become better at the game they are in, but also apply to the rest of the series and will make you a, a better player. They will make you see the numbers and the game in a different way than you do right now and will help you be more successful in the future. Uh, especially when you want to try and play harder difficulties like you know the various hard modes maddening on three houses these eight chapters can be found in fire emblem 12 which is fire emblem new mystery of the emblem a japanese exclusive title for the nintendo ds but there is an amazing fan translation uh, that allows you to play the game completely normally in english uh, for us english speakers around the world and it makes it uh, quite an enjoyable experience. So there's no guessing what menu options are or anything like that. You can just play the game in English, uh, emulate it really easy with a DS emulator. Just Google it, Google how to do it really easy. I'm not gonna tell you how here, just, just go do it. It's not hard. And these eight chapters are the very first eight chapters that you will play in the game. They are the prologue. But before you start the prologue, you do need to create an avatar unit. Uh, basically it's a, it's a it's the first instance of actually making a real standing character that you get to fight with in fire emblem uh and they are generally like the best character in the game <laughs> unless you play like zero percent growths which you probably aren't going to be doing uh because really they're they're super growth dependent but their growths are so high that they're basically not going to be screwed in any way they're going to be good right so just build whatever whatever you want especially if you're playing on normal or hard Choose whatever class, choose whatever past, presents, and futures. I'll link a uh, the SerenusForest.net page that talks about the past, presents, and futures and how they affect your stats on your uh, avatar unit. Uh, but overall, especially for normal and hard and even maniac, it doesn't matter a whole lot. If you're playing lunatic or lunatic reverse, you'll definitely want to be a little more careful. But I imagine just to like learn, you'll probably be playing on like hard, is what I would say. So all eight of these maps are small and bite-sized, and each one teaches a simple concept uh, that helps you become a better player and understand Fire Emblem in a way you probably don't right now. So chapter one is super simple. There's only two enemies on the field, a basic soldier, and then a enemy paladin who is the boss, who is Jagan. Even though he's promoted, he has low stats and is easily taken down by the one unit you have available, which is the avatar. Uh, this chapter teaches the basics of just like movement, attack, all that different stuff, but also a t also like the importance of choosing whether to attack on player phase or let the enemy attack you on enemy phase. When done properly, it allows you to save resources, uh, like you don't have to heal as much essentially, and it also can save turns or whatever else if that means anything to you. So for instance, if you were to attack Jagan, on player phase then he attacks you maybe that'll kill you or maybe that'll make it so you have to heal on the next player phase and you won't be able to kill him uh, so the safest thing to do would be to let him attack you on enemy phase and then if you need to heal you can heal on your player phase or if you can just take him out without him without receiving a counter attack then you can just attack him without receiving a counter unless you're playing reverse lunatic then you'll receive a counter no matter what but we're not really focusing on that right now but it really teaches the importance of when you attack or when you take an attack. Chapter two introduces terrain in forest tiles and fort tiles and enemy attack priority. So the enemy AI in every Fire Emblem has some sort of attack priority, whether it be uh, where I can deal the most, most damage, where I can like, kind of dogpile in a, uh, a player unit to kill them when combining with uh, my, my allies around. Um, and so on and so forth. There's just a bunch of different things. Sometimes they prioritize not being able to attack to be like take damage in return. Uh, Radiant Dawn is that way, I believe, where they really, really like to stay alive as long as possible, like the enemies do. So they will almost always go after someone who can uh, that can attack back. So there, there's even funny instances where you can have like Ike and Mist, Ike being a really, really strong character, Mist being a really weak, frail character standing right next to each other. But if you like take all of Ike's weapons away or just unequip him and you make sure Mist has a weapon that she can attack with, then they will attack Ike instead of Mist. So instead of getting a kill or doing a ton of damage, they'll miss or do like nine damage or something small and insignificant, uh, which is honestly pretty funny. 
And once you learn how to effectively manipulate the enemy AI, every game in the series becomes uh, a little easier and honestly more fun to strategize around because it takes a lot, a lot of the guesswork. Uh, it takes a little bit of thinking and a little bit of planning, but it can be a lot of fun to work with. And every game does have different uh, enemy AI. Uh, some of them share traits and stuff, but if you really want to know more about it, there are tons of forum posts, Reddit posts, and just guides online that talk about it, and you can look into it for the specific game you're playing. Chapter 3 is like an actual challenge, implementing what you learn in Chapter 1 and 2. Uh, it's kind of a fun, effective test in testing your knowledge from the things you've learned previously. Uh, there's more enemies on the map, and you need to be more careful with enemy priority and who they're actually going to attack, and also need to be careful about uh, player phase versus enemy phase and the basics of those things and make sure you're using the terrain uh, properly especially the forts to raise your defense and also get healed on player phase so uh, chapter three is just kind of like the culmination of chapter one and two and everything you learn there and really putting it into practice chapter four of the prologue introduces two range enemies and effective damage the two range enemies being archers Especially if you go to, uh, there's a route split for chapter four. You can either go to a map where there's uh, a focus on melee, enemy, melee enemies and there's only a couple of archers, or you can go to a uh, one that's more focused on ranged attackers and that leaves you with a couple of archers and a sniper as the boss, which is like terrifying if you actually let him attack you. <laughs> uh, and they also do effective damage against a new unit you give for that chapter being a Pegasus Knight. So it introduces you to those basic concepts and it encourages you to work around them and be ready to uh, take them on later down the road. Chapter five gives you probably the most diverse enemy density that, you'll see, that you've seen so far and also gives you more tools to handle that enemy diversity. Uh, you, you have Pegasus Knights, you have Archers, you have uh, Pegasus Knights, you have a Pegasus Knight, you have Archers at this point, or even like just Speedy Myrmidon, depending on the route you choose for Chapter 4. Uh, you have your your Avatar unit, and then you also get a Mage in Merrick who is actually really, really strong for the prologue, even on like Lunatic and Lunatic Reverse. Uh, so you have a lot of room to play with, and it just kind of lets you experiment with your one to two range uh, new unit in Merrick, and then also just making sure you don't take counter attacks, uh, luring enemies in a safe way using terrain that's there. Uh, it, it makes for some fun, uh, again, it's a kind of a fun test of everything that you've learned so far, and it just kind of adds on top of it uh, by giving the enemy more tools, but also giving you more tools as the player to work with. Chapter six is more of the same, kind of just like practice and it helps you become uh, better and more aware of enemy stats and stuff like that. And chapter seven introduces reinforcements uh, in that in a couple turns, enemies will appear on the forts and there's actually some pretty scary ones. I'm not sure how it is on like hard or maniac for their appearances. Uh, I'm most familiar with lunatic at this point. And you know, there's some Cavaliers, a Pegasus Knight, some really terrifying enemies that can appear and just fly in and, and take you out pretty easily. Uh, so yeah, it just prepares you for that and there can be like, prepare, prepares you for ambush reinforcements as well, which can be terrifying. But another big part of chapter seven that I, I don't know if I've seen talked about very much, it is a very blatant example of game dialogue preparing for surprise, like preparing the player for surprises the game will throw at you. So it's really like an introduction to say, hey, pay attention. When the enemy says, Ooh, watch out for reinforcements, there's going to be reinforcements in a turn or two. So dialogue is important <laughs> uh, as far as gameplay goes in those instances. Then finally, the final chapter of the prologue being chapter eight is your first chance to put all of your practice to work. There are, uh, there's a bunch of enemies, ton of enemy diversity. There are really speedy, scary uh, thieves, but there's also really hard hitting uh, brigands. And there's also hunters that are in the mix and mages. And can be a pretty terrifying map to deal with. But if you employ everything that you've learned from chapters one through seven, uh, chapter eight can be a really gratifying experience and uh, allows you to, again, put into practice everything you've learned so far. So the prologue in chapters one through eight of 
uh, Fire Emblem 12. Beautifully made chapters, really fun puzzles to solve. Some of my favorite chapters ever, now that, I, uh, now that I've played them on the hardest difficulty especially. It makes them just, makes me appreciate the design of them really, like a lot, really fun stuff. I would suggest, like after you have a good knowledge of Fire Emblem, like a decent base, like you kind of know, you know what all, like you know what all the numbers mean. You know how a certain formulas work, meaning like how how you double attack or how you uh, how you know how much damage you're gonna deal, how your hit formulas work, and all that different stuff. This is the next step to becoming a great player. This is like going from uh, intermediate player to like advanced player, in my opinion. Uh, Fe12 really does a good job of teaching the player how to be better. Whereas you see like Lin Mode in Fire Emblem 7 really uh, introduces the player to basic mechanics. FE12 build, builds on basic mechanics to teach the player how to really understand and use them to their advantage. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Make sure to subscribe for more content like this. We're going to be more regular with our uploads, I hope. I'm working really hard on it. Um, and I'm sorry for the lack of uploads lately. Uh, I've been busy with... Uh, with other work and other things, but hopefully I have a little more time now to focus on this and make it uh, the great channel that it once was. <laughs> hopefully a bit of a return to form. Uh, that's my goal at least. And uh, yeah, comment your thoughts. What do you think about the FE12 uh, prologue chapters and what are your experiences with them? And if you have any questions, Feel free to hit me up in the Discord. I leave. I always leave a link in the Discord uh, in the description for the Discord. So if you want to come chat with me, feel free to at me or just DM me. I'm always free to talk uh, about Fire Emblem and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time, friends.